Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Connect the Knox. I'm your host, Julia Hurley, connecting Knoxville to the nation. Today's podcast guest is one of our all-time most famous basketball players, truly, if not the most prolific, long-range shot expert in the country, Mr. Chris Lofton. Chris, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Been looking forward to it. Good. Wonderful. We're so excited to see your face. We just Every time we get any town with Chris Lofton, everybody in Knoxville, the crowd goes wild. We're so excited to have you here. <laughs> it is. So um, for those of, of the people that don't know anything about you, and that's what this podcast is about, is really and truly introducing outside people in the nation to Knoxville and what is important to Knoxville, why people like you are so Knoxville, even though you're not from Knoxville, is why it's so important to know what people like you have done for us and what we've been able to do for you and why that's such a symbiotic relationship and important. So we'll start with the very basics. What are your connections to Knoxville, Tennessee? Just, I mean, for me, you know, I grew up in Maysville, Kentucky, small town, playing basketball. And, you know, University of Tennessee gave me an opportunity to play basketball there in the city of Knoxville when nobody else wouldn't. So Knoxville is my second home. I'm always there. I love Knoxville. I love the fans. I love everything about it. So, you know, Knoxville is a very special place to me. Are you telling me that Tennessee was the only D1 college to recruit you? Is this the story that I don't know? Absolutely. Yeah, my senior year, it was, you know, Tennessee or a small NAI school in Georgetown, Kentucky. And you know, so that's why Tennessee, uh, Knoxville will always have a special place in my heart. Well, I bet all those schools are just not happy about that decision. <laughs> <laughs> we look back on the Chris Lofton years and it's just like, wow, it's almost like you weren't a real person. Your talent and drive, I, 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 I did not know this. So that is so interesting. Tell us a little bit about how that four years in college transformed your life here in Knoxville and some of the things that you learned on, along the way, just kind of as a as a person and a young person, um, you're very young now. So it's like all the contributions that you've been able to make and the influences that you've had. How did Knoxville impact that for you? Knoxville has a huge impact on my life because when I got here, I was 18 years old and I left. I was what, 22, 23. And, you know, I was from a boy to a man. You know, I was grown. So, you know, Knoxville, you know, those Four or five years I stayed there was was special because, you know, I went through some tough times, rough times in life, you know, being away from home that long, you know, not being around mom and dad, you know, I had to figure things out on my own. So it was special. You know, it was tough times. But like, you know, like, as you know, like when you you're going to grow up, there's going to be tough times like adversity and you can either run from it or run through it. And, you know, Knoxville made me run through it and. It made me a better person I am today and, you know, a better man. And, you know, Knoxville will always be, you know, a special place for me, as like I said. What was your major at UT? Oh, so I majored in African-American history. Okay. What are we doing with that today? Uh, Nothing exactly, but, you know, I always knew that, you know, me being a basketball player, I wanted to do something along the lines of coaching, training, oh, scouting, yeah. you know, commentating. I did some commentating high school games this year, so. You know, just along those lines, probably doing something with basketball. Oh, one thousand percent, absolutely. So I see on Facebook all the time that you are co you are coaching. Are you all over the country? I see you everywhere. I see pictures of you at little league games, supporting <laughs> other kids' successes, commentating. Tell us a little bit about where your growth period is now that you you went semi pro, didn't you, for a little while? Yeah, I, I played in Europe. European basketball for 10 years and you know I finished that in 2019 was my last year and you know ever since then I've been just trying to figure out what's next you know 2020 COVID hit it was kind of uh, put a pause on my basketball career kind of ended it so you know now I'm you know doing a little bit of different things like I've, I've done some training skills I've done uh, commentating high school games I've done some speaking engagements so I think right now is just trying to figure out like what avenue I really want to focus on a pursue, but, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. I like doing different things, like, you know, having all these different avenues I'm doing, but I feel like eventually that I'll probably want a college staff or NBA coaching staff is one of the goals. We all hope that goal gets reached for you. I know that everybody in Knoxville would be absolutely beyond excited to have you here. 
uh, <laughs> you know, we won't talk about our needs here on, on basketball per se. Um, your, re- your jersey just recently got retired, and there are, what, 50 maybe in the history to ever have a retired jersey in all sports at UT, I believe. Is that correct? So, like, one of 50 people. Oh, I really don't know that number, baby. That's- <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that night. Oh, it was special. And, you know, that was, that whole weekend was special, you know, leading up to how they told me, you know, back in the fall, how they told me it was going to happen. And then, you know, with me, it was just special because so many people came out to, you know, show support for me. It was just special. My old high school teammates, my old college teammates, old coaches from elementary school, high school, football coach. And, of course, you know, Vol Nation came out to support. So it was just special. My parents were right there with me. So it was – I'm telling you, I look back, and it was, like, especially – I wish it didn't end. Like, we had a great time. Like, my family – from my friends and family from Maysville came down to support. You know, I took them, you know, showed them around downtown Knoxville. And oh. you know, still to this day, they talk about how they had the best time of their life that weekend. So it was special. And, you know, I was glad I got to share it with them. That is, that is a, you know, downtown Knoxville is so special. It's grown. You got to see it the way that I saw it. We're almost the same age. So you know how Knoxville used to be <laughs> and what it is today. Did you imagine at any point in time or what did you imagine it would have turned into back then? Because the strip has completely changed. And for those of you that don't know, the strip is Cumberland Avenue. That is also Kingston Pike. So right. we have three names for everything here. It's completely changed. Tell us about your experiences there because I, there was a news story that came out. A guy did in the, the news sentinel here about the changes on Cumberland Avenue and asked for stories. And of course, some we can't tell and some <laughs> we can. But what has, <laughs> we all laugh about that. <laughs> so, and, um, what are the changes that you've experienced in Knoxville? And some of that, and a lot of that, I know that you're going to say no or you're going to be humble about it because that's your personality. But a lot of that was your era of sports, the era of people sh- ushering in sheer will and talent to bring in the fans that brought in the hotels, that brought in the money that people were starting to pay attention to Knoxville. And that started happening during your four years at UT. And that really changed the outlook for Knoxville because we are so sports oriented. What changes have you seen that have been really positive? And if you could add changes, what would those be? Um, yeah, I've seen like just, the new facilities, the new, everything's new on the strip now. Like, it just looks totally different. Like, I like the old strip because it was some of the best times of my life being there after football games, being packed, you know, getting food, just hanging out. You know, you got the, you know, the bar scene and just like college students just having fun, just out there on the street talking, you know, just, and you had your choice of what to do. You could stand outside and talk, go in the bar, club, eat. Like, it was just, it was just that, you know, camaraderie that I loved you know, during the strip days. And, you know, I feel like right now it's, it's hard to do that. You know, I don't think it's a lot to do that on the strip right now. I know a lot of people will be in Old City and stuff, but that strip is just special to me because that's that's where everything was. And, you know, but, you know, sometimes I know, you know, change is good. You know, I guess maybe the new students like it how it is now, you know, but, you know, people our age and older probably like the old strip because it was seemed like it was more fun. But, you know, kids is different these days, so they might, they might like it the way it is now better. I feel like we had like three generations of goers. So not necessarily age generations, but three generations of fans. And we all had the exact same experience on the strip. And now it's such a stark contrast that it's not recognizable. But these kids seem to love it the way it is. I just miss, I miss Hannah's. <laughs> Absolutely. Hannah's Artis. Remember Artis? <laughs> I do. Um, do you, now, what was it? Was it RTs that had the Saturday night phone dancing? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. I just remember RTs where you walked up the steps. And yes. Like, that, yeah. I think that was still RTs, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You know, over and the OC. There were so many things. So many things. Okay. Anyway. We all know that real estate is location, location, location. Our team at Just Homes Group has the true expertise, pairing buyers and sellers with the right opportunities. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home right here in Knoxville, Lenore City, Clinton, or Farragut, we have the expertise throughout every Knoxville surrounding area. Call Just Homes Group today. You have traveled the world, the whole world, and you still love Knoxville, Tennessee. Like it's it's your home. 
what about Knoxville is so special compared to all these major places that you've been? I mean, you could choose to be anywhere, a fan anywhere, play anywhere, do whatever. And Knoxville's so close to you and to your heart. What about Knoxville's different and special? I think for me, like I told you before, like Knoxville took a chance for me. University of Tennessee gave me a scholarship to play basketball where nobody else would. So there was, you know, they're always going to be a special place in my heart. They gave me an opportunity, you know, when I was struggling, when I didn't know what I was going to do, I was scared. Like, I was nervous. Like, maybe I wasn't made for college basketball. You know, maybe not as good as I thought I was. And, you know, Knoxville gave me that opportunity to come play here. And, you know, I say one day I'll be living in Knoxville, probably. You know, I would say that. And, you know, I come back, you know, quite often to, you know, I got friends there. I do some work there. So, you know, it's always a special place to me. Yeah, hopefully do some coaching here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what do you personally think? I ask these same questions of everybody, and no two people have had the same answers yet. What do you think is the biggest misconception from the outside of Knoxville, Tennessee? Most biggest misconception. That's a great question. Um, I think people like think like it's all like country and. Oh, like small, but like we got it all here. You know, we got whatever you want to do in Knoxville, we got it. You know, whether you want to go out, you want to relax, we got chill spots, good food, great restaurants, great scenery. We got Market Square, you know, like we got we got all that you really need. You know, like we got it's like a small town living, but it's not. But you know, you can raise a family here. I think it's a great place to raise a family. I feel like we got we're like a Swiss Army, like we got the jack of all trades. Like <laughs> The Swiss Army knife of cities. <laughs> yeah. We got the Swiss Army knife. We got it all here. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. Care of Chris Lofton, Swiss Army knife of cities. You are welcome. <laughs> Whatever you want, we got. That is the best. That is honestly the best one. I'm going to share that with everybody before this even <laughs> releases. I'm going to text it to everybody that's been a member of this show so far. We are the Swiss Army knife. That is the best. That is the best. Okay. So... We're going to ask about it, and we know we know we can give a roundabout answer. How do we feel about the upcoming basketball season for next year? We just finished the season. People were calling for Rick Barnes' head. They always call for the coach that's not winning a national championship. My God, we could win every game but that one, and that's the end of the world. Kill them now. So, Vol fans, if, you, if you're not a Vol fan yet and you've never seen uh, Vol Twitter, be prepared when you move here. But tell us a little bit about your projections for next season. Have you gotten to know some of the players and how they're feeling? What's going on there? Well, not yet, honestly, because, you know, the transfer portal where people can transfer now, in and out. So I have to see, go to practice and see the final roster. And But I'm sure by, like, June, July, I'll know. So can I get back with you on that? Absolutely. I, was, Absolutely. Like, I have the most confidence in our coaching staff with Coach Barnes and, and the coaching staff. I know they'll get the right players in and they'll do it the right way. They'll be practicing hard this summer, getting ready. So I have nothing but respect for them, and I know it's going to be a great season. We just shot a TV show in the practice facility and that's the first time I'd ever been in the basketball practice facility. Like, I'm in the football side all the time with my NIL kids. And so the first time I'd ever been in the basketball practice facility, one of the most beautiful facilities I think I've ever seen. How often did you spend time in there outside of actual practices? Like, what did it really take to become the Chris Lofton? Well, you know, they didn't have that when I played. They got it. I think it opened up my senior year for a little bit, but, you know, so we didn't use it a lot. So I started using it when I was a pro playing overseas when I come back in the summer. Nice. So I got my most use out of it then, you know, a lot then. But, you know, like we used Thompson Bowling Arena, and then sometimes we had to go to, the, like, T-Reg. Stokely was still there. So we had to use other gyms, to, you know, if Thompson Bowling wasn't available. What was, your, what was your favorite place on campus to work out? Mine was the bubble, and I miss <laughs> the bubble every day. I miss it. Uh, well, only uh, – man, we, we worked out with the team, so we didn't work out anywhere else. You know, we had to wait – the team weight room. I mean, I, I mean, I, I went to the T-Rex a couple of times, I, I remember. But, you know, for the most part, I lifted with the team in the weight room. We're so excited to have you on this podcast. I'm asking you questions all over the shop and not necessarily all about Knoxville. I just get to <laughs> – I love when I get to spend time with you. You're the most positive person I've ever met in my entire life. I appreciate it. so amazingly just giving. You're just, you're just a great guy. So Thanks. I want to get you out of here on time because I know you have something else going on. So we're going to do a three-minute lightning round mm -hmm. of, like, super great questions. Favorite restaurant in Knoxville? Uh, favorite restaurant in Knoxville. I got to name one, Julie. I got to name, name one. three. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, 
Sullivan's is one of my favorites. Oh yeah. I love so, nobody's lifted Sullivan's yet. That's a really good one. I love Sullivan's. I'm there a lot. I used to stay out that way, so I, they get a lot of my money. Um, <laughs> it's my money. <laughs> yes. uh, Market Square, I like um, Stock and Barrel. I like Dave. Oh, yeah. Dude. I mean, Calhoun's. Uh, Ruth Chris, I like steak. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like uh, Connor's. Who Connor's is top notch. Yeah, yeah. I would say top those notch. are my favorites. Oh, Scrambled Jake's for my brunch. Oh, they're br – oh, my gosh. I So I feel like I ate 2,200 calories in one sitting <laughs> at one brunch one day. I didn't eat for the whole rest of the day and half the next day. I was like, that is a one-time event. Yes. <laughs> Scrambled Jake's is really good, actually. I haven't been there in a while. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. All right. What is your um, – what is your best kept secret? So let's say that you have somebody that calls you up and says, hey, I'm in town. Take me somewhere that no one else would know about. What is your best kept secret for when you entertain other people? Actually, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the best kept secret because people don't know it, but I, I like, you know, if I got a friend, I like taking them to Marcus Square and go bowling. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is that? Maple that. Hall. Maple Hall. That's, that's it. I, that's what I like to do. I like go down there because, you, you know, you got whatever you want. You can... You know, if your friends want to drink, we can bowl, eat, and they've got all sorts of options downtown to do. They have that private event center on the top floor. Did you know about that? Yeah, I, I did. had no idea. I went there for a Legends of Tennessee football camp fundraiser. We show up to the bowling alley. There's no signage, and unless you just know to walk through the bowling lane to get upstairs, so I'm just standing there and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And the lady says, "Ma'am." Uh, what is it they're waiting for? I said, well, I'm just supposed to be here for some private event, but that no one seems to be here. She goes, well, if you walk all the way to the back across the hall and it's, you overlook all of Knoxville. I didn't even know. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know this was here. What a great spot. What a great spot. Okay. How do you think, let's see, I have one last question. It has nothing to do with restaurants. What do you think about Knoxville's ability to bring younger people here and what it's going to take to keep them here. So one of the biggest things that I've been working, I know you know Derek Furlow, that I've been working with Derek on is keeping the young athletes when they graduate, if they don't go pro or semi-pro, keeping them here and helping them build businesses. What do you think is the biggest challenge to that and the biggest opportunity to help them stay here to be part of Knoxville long-term? I think for one, like usually when people leave, they're, they're comfortable you know, where they came from. You know, some people want to go home. Some people want to go to bigger cities and, you know, bigger markets. But I think I would tell them as as a former athlete, like Knoxville, Knoxville fan base, Vault Nation is different from any other fan base. Like they want to, I feel like they want to help you. They want to help you succeed in life, not just football. So I feel like if you have an opportunity to stay here and, you know, start out, you know, get a job, I would definitely recommend it because, just being an athlete from Tennessee, it's 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 special. And, you know, people love that. If you're nice, help people serve, make a difference. People like people take care of that. They really do. And that is the, that's what we're trying to work on is giving more opportunities. We want you to stay. It's like, please come home. Please come back to Knoxville. We want you to be here so badly because we want you to be here so badly. It's like, please come, come, come and stay and contribute because we just appreciate you so much. All right. I'm going to let you go. Before I do, how do people get a hold of you for a speaking engagement? Um, what is the easiest way for people to find your information? Because I didn't even get into your whole life story. That would take an entire podcast on its own. But you have so much positivity, how to get out of struggles, how to maintain, how to move forward. You literally have one of the best and motivational stories I've ever heard. How do people get with you to get you on their stage and get on their get on your calendar? I'm on, I'm on social media. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, so reach out to me. It's just What's Chris that Lofton. username? Uh, just type in Chris Lofton and I'm there. C <laughs> underscore Lofton. Yes. C underscore Lofton. That is it. Yes, correct. Chris, thank you as always for taking time to spend time with me. Next time you're in Knoxville, let me know. Dinner's on me. And we really appreciate you, everybody. I'm Julia Hurley. Our guest today was Chris Lofton, literally the most prolific shooter in college <laughs> basketball history. I'm telling you, go back and watch this guy. Listen, I'm Julia Hurley bringing Knoxville to the nation. Thank you for connecting the Knox. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you for tuning into the show. Make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a five-star review on your podcast player of choice. And if you would like information on moving to Knoxville, send me a private message. 
As always, this is Julia Hurley connecting Knoxville to the nation.